Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Bite Podcast with Raven and Ree. I'm your host, Raven. And I'm your host, Ree. And welcome to episode 10, right? Episode 10? Yes. That's wild. We already, we've already we stuck through it with 10 episodes. 10 episodes. Heck yes. And there's so much that happened between, I mean, we started in October, and we're in January now. Yes. And we're both busy people. You know, I have a full-time job. You're a full-time student. Yeah. And we have so much other things that we do on the side. We do TikTok. So it's just a miracle that we've kept up with it. Yes. And uh, there was, I talked to this this person um, that uh, he he makes his own films and stuff like that. And uh, my, my students are doing a documentary on him, my high school students. And like the message of the, we had asked him what he wanted the message of the like documentary to be. And he said like, if you love something, just do it. And I was like, that kind of resonates with me. Because I was like, oh, that we were kind of like that too. We were just like, let's just do it. <laughs> and then it. that's literally what we say for everything, you know, that, that led us to having not one but two podcasts. Yes. That we both really enjoyed. The book. Mm-hmm. Other things that we have for the future, possibly. Um. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of say that. Because thanks, for, thanks to the listeners. Because, you know... We'd probably still be doing it if we didn't have listeners, but y'all yeah. make it the worthwhile. Yeah. <laughs> the worthwhile. Y'all make it worth it. Yes. So today we will be talking about chapters 11 to 15 of uh, Midnight Sun. Uh, we are going to have, for like the next four weeks, you'll be getting a video every Monday um, because, you know, Midnight Sun is so long and every chapter literally has so much detail that... It takes forever to get through. <laughs> so we didn't anticipate it would taking that long and for it being so long. Um, because with the first uh, episode eight and nine was supposed to be just one episode, but they ended up being like an hour and a half each. Yeah. So that's a little wild. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we can jump into it. So chapter 11 is interrogations. Um, and is I, I, this chapter is just um it's bella asking edward a lot of questions yeah and then but also i thought uh it was also a little like uh the the title because when i was do rereading i was trying to go back and look at like the 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 like uh oh my god what am i saying what am i trying to say <laughs> like the connection between the title and the chapter yeah like what happened so I think this also has to do with um, with Jessica ambushing Bella and asking oh. her all those questions. Because there's like a good like a couple pages where it's just like Bella and Jessica talking because Jessica's like what? And then also Mike um, comes in and kind of like interrogates Bella a little bit. Um, so that's what the chapter is about. It's just uh, it's after Bella already found out that he was a vampire. Um, she found out in the previous chapter um this is also the chapter where we get i don't oh this is the first time that they show up to school in edward's car together and you know in the movie that was an iconic scene oh my gosh you know he has the sunglasses everything even though like it's not supposed to be sunny because if it was sunny, he wouldn't come to school exactly but you can still you know sunglasses yeah (laughs) i thought that was a oh that's a really good scene he's like i'm just a cool guy um, but I thought it was so cute because when he first picked her up and she like got off, like was walking out of her door, she was wearing a green sweater, but the way that he, um, it described the sweater, it was a shapeless jumble. So it was just like a giant sweater <laughs> and he like hated it. Cause he was like, well, this is like nothing compared to, you know, her blue blouse that he loves. Her blue blouse. Exactly. That, Cause that's exactly what he said. He was like, it's like. The blue blouse is not is like he compares it to the blue blouse. Um, so I thought that that was a funny part of of it because he just the way that he just like hates this green sweater because it's just so unflattering <laughs> on her body. Yeah. Uh, also on on that same page, page two twenty one is when he talks about the shapeless jumble. If you're gonna be going along with us, I'll be giving little uh page numbers here and there too. But I put consent king because <laughs> what do you say? Um, oh, okay, okay. 
He had said, do you want to ride with me today? I asked. Unlike dinner last night, I would let her choose from now on. It must always be her choice. And I was like, yes, consent. Come through. I, <laughs> we love a king who consents to yeah. anything. He's like, if you don't want to ride with me, fine. And we also see that later in one of the other chapters we're going to talk about. Um, the meadow. The I think it's chapter 16, the knot, where he asks her like if she wants to go home (laughs) yeah if she wants to go home i'll take her home i love how Um, she's like i love how she's like so amazed by their cars because it's like they have these flashy cars but they never drive them because they're trying to not show off that they have money because people are going to be nosy and be like how do you get this money how do you have all this wealth (laughs) <laughs> yeah, Carlo was like a billionaire. Yeah, yeah, he I saw that him he's on the list of like top 10 most like richest fictional characters with like Tony Stark and like all I wonder of them. where Christian Grey lies on that cuz Christian Grey was also Yeah. is pretty is rich, has his own company, all these yeah. other things. So I wonder yeah. where Christian Grey falls in that list. But I, th- I think Carlo I think Carlo will still be richer than him because Carlo has had years to build his wealth. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. Just... I, I think so too. But... <laughs> yeah, so, and then I thought it was so funny because um, she had said something and he was like, why don't you drive that? And he was like, well, like we're trying to fit in. She was like, well, it's not really working, dude. <laughs> like, he's like, you don't need the cars just not to fit in. Like, you're already not fitting in. Yeah, with how they dress, with how they act. <laughs> Their beauty. Their beauty. On page 226, I put Edward Smooth as fuck. <laughs> because I, where was it? Um, oh my goodness, where is it? Okay, okay. It was, uh, it was after Jessica had came up to them and was like, oh, Bella, here's your sweater, like your jacket, right? And then he was reading uh, Jessica's mind and Bella was like, tell me what she's going to ask me because like I want to be prepared. And then he asked, he said that Bella was going to, that Jessica was going to ask Bella, one, if they were dating, and two, if, if she, how he feels, or how Bella feels about Edward. And she was like, uh, what should I say, or, uh, or what, right? And he said, I suppose you could say yes to the first, if you don't mind. And then he put her choice, always her choice, period. It's easier than any other explanation. And then she said, I don't mind. And then he said, and as for the other explanation, well, I'll be listening to hear the answer to that one myself. And I was uh, like, I, Edward, you're smooth. I love that part. Like, I could just ima- like, imagine Edward, like, gl- sunglasses Edward in that one scene telling her, like, I'll just be listening. Like, oh, my goodness. Yeah. And then... There's after that we do get like a good chunk of this chapter is Bella like being interrogated by Jessica. And yeah. Edward's like listening. That's how we get the conversation because um Edward's like listening into their conversation. Um but the 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 good the funny thing is is that in the twilight when we got the scene, um we only got their conversation like what was actually being said, but we, here we're getting what Jessica's also thinking. Which I think is very, like, it's very yeah. telling of her character. Yeah. And I put, and I also put here that Jessica is, like, living vicariously through Bella. Yeah, she is. She's like, you tell me everything. Like, I need to know. <laughs> so I can imagine it later. Like, she just, she's living vicariously. She wishes that was her. Yeah. Jeez. So after they get this whole interrogation over, um... I think, th- I mean, they, they, Jessica interrogates Bella for, like, a good while. Like, I think from the entire class period, 228 all the way to, um, 233. So they were, you know, she was being interrogated for quite some time. And then this is where, oh, on 234 is when Rosalie and them find out that Edward told Bella, or that Bella knows that they're vampires. And yeah. Rosalie says, how could he, that selfish jackass, how could he do this to us? 
I think jackass is Rosalie's favorite word when talking about Edward. <laughs> she calls so him too. it so many times. She does say it a lot. And oh, and this because this is because she finds out because they're sitting uh Edward's sitting at the table with Bella alone separately. And um So then oh, and then he starts eating with her. Yeah. And then that's how Bella, that's how Rosalie found out because he was like, oh, well, here we go. I mean, he couldn't really hide it for much longer. Like, he could, yeah, she she knew. I mean, I had wrote down here, I was like, Edward, because he took a bite of a. What did he take a bite of? Pizza. Yeah, pizza. And uh, he was like, I was like, he's going to eat food with Bella, but he has to regurgitate it later on. But that's Ugh. gross. That's disgusting. Because <laughs> he says, um, I sighed as I thought of how I would have to choke it back up later. It's disgusting. Because that's true because, I mean, they have they have stomachs, right? Because all their inner organs are still there. Yeah. They're just... But not... See, I don't know. Cause... <laughs> that's true. But I no, to... because when they get ripped up, they're like the... Stone. They're like, they're like stone. So it's like, I guess. I, see, I see. I don't know. I need, so to, I need to. I need I wonder if maybe um, anywhere there was organs, like maybe it's like hollow in that area. Yeah, I'd have to. You know? wa- I'd have to um go listen to Vampire Anatomy from Cherish's Twilight Sluice. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because they they go into depth about that. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what they had said about it, but because I'm like, well, where else would it be sitting? Like, where else would the food be, like in his stomach? But then, like, yeah, does he have a stomach? Because I know that on on Cherish's podcast, they had talked about how possibly all the like blood or any fluid is replaced by venom. Yeah. Um, but I wonder that venom has to have some bit of DNA. Of their original DNA in it, because then if not, then Edward wouldn't have been able to get. Yeah. Bella I mean, yeah. Re- I mean, Renesmee would not have even Resuscin- like looked had. <laughs> Res- oh my god! I've seen so many ridiculous Rasputin. Ride of the Resistance would have never um, <laughs> would have never looked like him. Yeah. Exactly. So. Dang. Yeah. Well. So then that that's a, that's one thing I wondered. I was like, well, where is this food going to go? Like, it's just going to be sitting in, like, where, you know? But, hey, I guess it's only a question that Stephanie Meyer could really answer. Yeah. I don't have my illustrated guide with me. Otherwise, I'd try and look. But- oh, so for the rest of... I didn't really write uh, write down much for the rest of chapter 11 but I did write there was one quote that I was like oh my heart um it's on 237 and it says um I don't know what they were talking about they were talking about um I guess they were asking questions or something and he said do you truly believe that you care for me more than I do for you and I was like oh my goodness and then she put you she said you're doing it again and he said what and she said dazzling me oh da- yeah oh Jeez, yeah Bella. and then it kind of just ends with um with um them talking about like their hunting styles and how because because Bella's all like it's not hunting season and he's all like uh we don't use but- we don't, we don't use do that, guns. Yeah. We don't need weapons. That's the same thing. Uh, oh, she'd asked if she could go watch them yeah. hunt. And he and was disgusted. He was horrified. He was like, disgusted. are you kidding me? Like, why would you even think of that? Yeah. This was another one of, like, his mood just went from pleasant to, like, ugh. And I'm like... There's, another, there's another one. I had wrote down... Um, where is it? Oh, it's in the me- the meadow scene where, like, she's so, like, oh, well, we'll talk about it later, but. Yeah. He, he she's one way, and he's his just, like, other, like, the typical Edward, like, oh, 
I'm a monster. So that's oh one of God. these. He was like, how could you even think of something so vile? And yeah. then they left. They left the cafeteria. After, after, uh, yeah, because she's talking to him and she's like, Grizzly's Emmett's favorite. I like Mountain Lion. Which is just something, that's such an odd conversation to have, right? Yeah. Jeez. Then we get to chapter 12, Complications. Um, I like, the beginning of this was my favorite because he had noticed that Angela was, like, heartbroken because she was talking to, is it Ben? Or I think ben, so, yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, and she, like, wanted him to, like, ask her out or whatever she wanted to ask him. And he was like, oh, like, I know that feeling. Like, I understand. I understand. And so later in the chapter, he ends up, um, it's actually on page 251, so we're skipping ahead a little. But he's telling, he tells Emmett, like, I, I want to do something. Go along with it. And he was like, what? Is I he, love Emmett was like, this. what is wrong with you? <laughs> I love this. Emmett tells him, who are you and what have you done with my brother? So basically what they do is in Spanish class, Edward and Emmett set up Ben to ask out Angela because they make it seem like um, Edward wants to ask out Angela. And, um, but I had put, I had put here, I put Edward does something nice for Angela, but also like, what? Because at this point, They've people in the school have already seen Bella and Edward together. Yeah, so it makes so that, confused. Oh, a hundred percent. And I'm like, like if this, I, this is something that should have been done maybe before him and Bella were seen together, because I agree. I don't know. I to me that like if that were, well, I'm like if that were to happen in the movie, that'd just be like, like that puts like speculation in people because like people talk, you know. I mean, and Ben even says it here, like, in his mind, he said, um, quiet girls, like, hmm, I don't know, maybe Bella Swan. And then, yeah, so then he gets Ben jealous so that he can ask out Angela, which is a good gesture, and I think it's really cute of Edward to do that. And then he says, maybe, and then he's like, I like this Ben. He seemed bright and well-meaning, maybe even worthy of a girl like Angela. And I'm like, you know, I wanted more Angela and Edward content as besties. True. I think if, if, I think possibly, like, if Bella was never in the picture, like, it could have very easily been Angela. Yeah. Because, you know, there's all, Angela was the only one in that school that he was like, that he thought was, like, pure and, like, nice and good. Because yeah. everyone else was, like... Fake and all fake about themselves. And, yeah. Oh, and, you know, there's theories that Angela could be a witch and she knows everything. Because, it, and, like, we don't see witches or wizards in the, the Twilight universe. But who knows, you know, Stephanie Meyer could always pull something out. Like, what if in the new books, Angela makes an appearance and... I had read something... That it was something about Twilight, but I don't even know where it was, like where I had seen it. And I I was like, oh, I have to talk about this. But it was something about how if vampires and werewolves exist in this Twilight world, that there's probably others that exist in the Twilight world that are just not mentioned. And I was like, well, that makes yeah. sense, right? Like, Yeah, because it's like, if you, if you notice with other fantasy, like other fantasy series with these creatures there's usually more because it's kind of like why do you have like just one or two yeah like why is it only vampires like yeah and then you have to have like a natural enemy you know like yeah humans aren't really vampires natural enemies they're like their prey so yeah like that's a very power imbalance but if you put a species that can be on the same level then that makes threatening, that makes things complicated. <laughs> Complications. <laughs> hey, there so, you go. So, I mean, you look at, like, Vampire Diaries, Harry Potter. They have they multiple have, species. Yeah. And, I mean, that's why in our book we're going to have everything. We're not hiding anything. We're going to have yeah. all, the, all the creatures you can possibly think of. So, yes. there you go. Nothing. I think the, 
Go I think it. the only I think the only book series that I've read where it's strictly like one species or it's one type of species with like mythology within that species is like Fallen and Hush Hush where it's about angels. Yeah. So because it's more religious based, so. But if those, you have angels yeah. and you have demons, right? Yes. So. Yeah. So um, like they'll have but you have angels, then you have fallen angels, and then you have like nymphs and nephil. So it's kind of like all the mythology within the angels demons realm. Yeah, but that then that makes sense. Like that's why it's, sometimes it's hard for me to like if there's a a book or something with vampires and werewolves, it's hard for me not to automatically think like there has to be witches. Yeah. Or there has to be you know something. Um. Because, like, why wouldn't there? You know, like, it just doesn't make sense. Like, why there yeah. wouldn't be. But. Yeah. So, on here, before after, before um, we Edward does a nice gesture for Angela, on 248, I had put, um, it was a quote. Oh, it was when they got to biology. So, this is the first time they're in biology, like, af- when they're on basically dating at this time. And they sat down, the lights turned off, and Edward was like that. He had no idea, but why the lights turned off made it, the environment just, like, just more, like, heightened. And he'd said, um, between her body and mine, the electricity hummed. <gasps> oh, my goodness. Like, just the, the descriptions. Yeah. Ugh. Jeez. Mike, this is, uh, my on, like, 254, 255, mainly 255 is where Mike is where we kind of are annoyed because he freaking that's the next one that i had was i was like yeah. mike i put mike pissed me off 255 yeah. cuz it's he, the the assumption he kind of makes with um like he thinks it so bella doesn't hear it but it's kind of like he's alluding that bella likes him because he has money Mm-hmm. And like Bella's a gold digger, kind of. It was like if if a rich guy is that important to you, like you're automatically thinking that all Edward is is a guy who's rich. Yeah, and yeah, I I think that's like I think in the movies it plays Mike off to be just like the goofy guy who has like a crush and blah blah blah. But like Mike is a dick. He is like, like he's the a, way he like he's like a pig. Like the way like, he talks about girls, he he's the typical degrading um, jock in It the makes book. sense why him and Jessica would end up together. And it's kind of like, if you, like, see every, like, I mean, like, if you have, like, a high school bully and, like, the popular guy of the football team, the popular cheerleader, then they're both assholes and they end up together and, like, they mm-hmm. get old and have babies, but then, like, you know that, like, hey, they were assholes in high school. Yeah. Yeah. So, it makes sense to why they, because I think, I don't think there was ever a time in this book that I was like, oh, Bella, like, Jessica has redeemable qualities. Like, ever. Yeah. I think maybe in Twilight, I didn't hate her as much, in Bella's yeah. perspective. I was like, oh, well, she's just like a... Typical... Typical, like... Envious kind of, yeah. girl. But then but in here, this one, it's just kind of, like, more intense, like... She's just a mean, like, mean and nasty. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> And then we kind of end this off with Rosalie just being pissed off as usual. Yeah. Um, ba- yeah, basically. Like, um, I think what had happened, let's see. I, I loved Emmett's kind of, wh- where is it? Because I just saw it. It was, um, they're, like, Rosalie is pissed off with, um, with Edward, and then it's all like Edward talks about how Rosalie is envious and jealous of Bella because it's like Bella is human and can have everything that Rosalie wants, and also she's the only person that has ever, um, like gotten Edward's attention yeah. when she's when Rosalie is so used, but um, and then that's how they find, and then it's they find out that. Bella found out through or pieced it together because um of Jacob because he's yes. the de- he's the descendant of Ephraim. Yeah, and that's then what, uh, that's what Edward had told them, right? He was like, "Look, like I didn't tell her, she actually told me." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she like figured she it figured out it out. Because and, the and then they had talked here about how like, "Oh, well, we should have known that like the younger ones would wouldn't believe it." 
Yeah. Um, and like right before that, Edward, I'm not, not Edward. Emmett said, I'm actually surprised you were able to, you rarely say the word, even with us talk about vampire. Yeah. <laughs> so it just goes to show that Edward really hates what he is, that he doesn't even say the word vampire. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Cause here she's just like, why did you tell her? And then she was like, I did not like, <laughs> yeah. But then, so then here at the end, um, I think it's just like Edward and, and Rose for a little bit. And then, um, he, she said, Alice told you I was thinking of burning your car, didn't she? And he put, she did, but I deserve that. If it makes you feel better, have at it. And she was like, um, I guess she looked at him to see if he was just like bluffing. And then he shrugged at her like, it's just a toy rose. And she was like, you've changed. She was yeah. like, Edward weeks ago would not have let me burn his car down but edward now will let me burn his car over a girl i know and he just tells her i know like i know i've changed uh it this just reminds me of okay i've gotten really back into game of thrones and i've been rewatching the um rewatching which i have an idea for a tiktok that i'm gonna do um but there's this line in the first or sec i think it's the first season there's a line by one of these characters because this character sam falls in love with a girl and he won't stop talking about her and how this and then this other guy his name's ed who he's kind of grumpy and he's like there's nothing more un- like annoying than a man in love or more sickening than a man in love and i just i get this vibe yeah. from rosalie oh. being like this is disgusting <laughs> Wow. So then we ended off on a kind of, uh, oh, we ended off because uh, Edward wants to talk to Jasper, but then I think Alice kind of stops him because she's like, she already know how it would end and Jasper would just follow whatever Carlisle said. Yeah. So he didn't talk to him. He was just like, okay. So then yeah. we get 13. So we have this chapter 12 complications, chapter 13 Another complication. (laughs) This is a very long, but it's honestly one of my favorite chapters. Because this is where I think I fell very in love with Bella. More than like... Yeah, because this is the one where Edward is asking Bella a lot of questions. He was like, you asked your questions yesterday. I asked my questions today. And like, it's like we see, like, this is a good chunk of all the details and questions and like all that that they go into whereas in twilight it's a couple pages because bella doesn't see herself as yeah. worthy and special so she just gives like he just asks she, like her descriptions are only like he asked me some questions about home and what i like to do and it's like yeah and his are like say it he goes into all the details so uh it starts off with edward watching bella sleep again <laughs> yeah she oh had- oh i oh i just i i just realized sorry sorry i wanted to um and also, sorry, my dog was barking. Um, so page 264, the end, is actually... Because chapter 12 was where Stephanie Meyer got up to on the oh. plot. Like, on the rough draft of Midnight Sun. So and this is 26... the, the, the part that was not leaked. Yeah. Yeah, this is the part where we've been waiting years for who've read it. And then 264, when I went back on the draft, two, page 264 is actually also the page number. Now, a lot of stuff had changed that she cut out and pasted and added, but she still managed to have the same number of length for the draft that, that where it ended. So I wonder if she did like did that like like on purpose. Like she was like, yeah. hey, like might as well. Yeah, I, w- I, ju- I just thought that... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just thought no, that was no, no, really you're fine, cool you're fine. That's something that... That's important. I mean, that was like a... Everyone... That, that got... Ex- I mean, pages 1 through 2 to 64 is what got everyone excited for Midnight Sun. And then, yeah. you know, people who hadn't read it went back and read it and was like, okay, now I need the rest. Um, yes. But, so yeah, so chapter 13 starts off with Bella watching... Or Edward watching Bella sleep. And then... I think he was just saying that she had, like, a restless night. Like, she was just very, like, tossy turning. And then on two, page 267, she was like, um, he said, you look tired. And she was like, I couldn't sleep. And he told her, neither could I. And I thought that was so funny. Like, they have such a really, like, they have a really good banter. Like, a really good, like, humor with each other. 
And she, she tells him, I suppose I slept just a little bit more than you did. And he was like, I wager you did. I'm like, how cute. Oh, uh, and then, oh, this is where the whole, like, conversation starts with, them asking, with her asking questions. And then she, de- you know, she says that her favorite color usually changes because of, like, what color his eyes are. Oh, yeah. So she said, uh, she asked her what her favorite color was. She said brown. She said brown because um, she because everywhere she used to be was brown. You know, the trees, the trunks, rocks, dirt. But all of that is covered with green stuff, he told her. Um, then, so he's just asking her tons of questions. He asked her about music. He asked her about books, about his her favorite scent, which is lavender, which is what he describes her blood to smell like. Yeah. So I wonder if that is like, if if um, like what our favorite scent is, if that's like, what we smell, what we smell, like what we what our favorite scent is is what our blood smells like, like in this like universe. Yeah. Because that would be interesting. Just the fact that her favorite scent is lavender or clean laundry, but lavender, yeah. and that's what he said that her blood blood smells like. Yeah, that's that's all. That's very interesting. Also with this AU, because I know with a lot of um like vampire mythical where like you have like when they smell and that that's how you make usually it's kind of the opposite where if it like if you smell your favorite smell on someone else then that's kind of like mm-hmm. an indicator so i think it's cool that it's probably it's the like opposite. her favorite smell yeah, yeah. they asked about can oh i also put here like he asked her about her favorite candy she said black licorice and i was like who, who the- likes black licorice L- Tumblr went in hysterics over this with the black licorice. Like, are you serious? Black licor, I w- and sour patch kids, which are so op- like polar opposites. Exactly. Like, I hate black licorice, so I guess it could never be Bella because that is disgusting. But I guess it would also make sense one because she's kind of like an old soul, right? And I guess like back then, like, people really did eat black licorice. Like that yeah. was like. I don't know why they still make it now because I doubt that there's people buying it. Maybe like older people are buying it. I can see yeah. like older people buying it, but nowadays I don't think not a lot, not a lot of people. But if she's like black licorice and that's like a candy from like Edward's time, so he's probably like, oh, like how cute. <laughs> I liked black licorice too. Oh my god, that just puts into a perspective how old he is. Oh, yeah. such an old man. What an old man, and um, yeah, they just uh, he's just asking her tons of questions, like literally about everything, like travel questions about um, I guess something about I don't know, oh, she said something about Beauty and the Beast, but I don't know what it was. That was her favorite what? Her favorite book? When um he. he... He asked her her favorite um, place, and then he asked, I think he asked her what her favorite movie was. Beauty and the Beast is Bella. Belle confirmed. I think so. And then, and then places where she wanted to travel. Oh my god, and like, oh, this is, this is where, um, how she describes certain things. Where is it? I don't know if it's, um... Oh, I think it's on, I think it's very later, like, he asks, basically, she just goes into, like, her favorite characters, he's her favorite, oh, um, yeah. she likes, how she likes classical music, how she likes, um, Neil Diamond, Phantom of the Opera, which, oh my god, Ken- Queen, love that. Kenzie is probably gonna go crazy, I don't know, I think she's finished this, but, so I want, I need to ask her how she thought about that, because Phantom of the Opera I know, because they mentioned Beauty and the Beast. And Phantom of the Opera. And those are her two absolute favorites. So Kenzie yeah. probably was like, oh my god, I'm Bella. Bella is me. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Um, um, so an, well, one of the one of the questions that I really liked when he asked, he said, Coke or Pepsi? She said, Dr. Pepper. And I was like, Queen, me too. Yes! <laughs> I was like, period. I love Dr. Pepper. Um, and then, oh... So then on 274, he asked her, Bella or opera? And she said, ballet, I guess. And I was like, is this foreshadow? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, the and this then, was oh, the- I love the topaz part. Okay, yeah, I got the favorite. Yeah, I, the topaz. See, in the movies, they make it look like his eye color would be her favorite, but in the book, it's the topaz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She tells her, "What's your favorite gemstone?" She says, "Topaz," and then she started blushing. And then he know he noticed that any time that she either got embarrassed or something like that, she, she would blush. So he was like, "Why are you embarrassed?" And she said, it's nothing. And he said, I would like to understand because he can't read her mind. And he just says, please, Bella. And she says, next question. <laughs> and then uh, and she finally told him, he said, it's the color of your eyes today. I suppose if you asked me in two weeks, I'd say onyx. And then um, he was, oh, what did he say? So, oh, he said, I put her in the same position of confirming her interest in me without receiving an assurance in return. Yeah. Dang, that's so cute. I'm gonna tell my husband, ask me my favorite color, and I'm gonna be like, mm, I think it's dark brown. He's gonna be like, why dark brown? Like, it's the color of your eyes today. I suppose if you ask me in two weeks, it'll be still be brown. <laughs> uh. <laughs> tell Carlos to ask me. <laughs> Which, by the way, where, where, oh, it's all the way over there, but Carlos keeps giving me Valentine's Day presents early. Oh my god. I've already received like five. Like, okay. I got, he got me the Edward candle. He got me Robert Pattinson's Pattinson signature. He got me the Edward tapestry. He got me this little, this, uh, like, Breaking Dawn, like, cloth poster. And I think there's one more that I'm missing. Oh, an Edward Cullen mask. So he's gotten me five gifts already. Oh, no, six. Because he got me, uh, today, uh, he got me a Funko Pop exclusive Edward Cullen with the with the gold eyes. Oh, that's so cute! And I was like, "You're gonna." I was like, "Now I have to collect all of them." And I don't even. I don't, I'm not gonna have. Um, after we open they- our our Secret Santa, and after we, and after I get Crystal's present, and he gets me the rest of my presents for Valentine's Day because he's like, "I still have a couple that are coming." Dude, this husband, guy go- husband goals. I'm just gonna He's let you know. My is, obsession. is that your first Funko Pop? Yeah. Well, okay. no, I have I had Harry Potter ones, but I opened them because I was like, oh, I love it, right? Yeah. But I don't. I'm not gonna open this one. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I I was just gonna say like they get addicting. I think I have like ten, so they get addicting, <laughs> and you want to collect them all. And I oh my god, so it's. I want to collect all the Twilight ones for sure, but anytime I go to like Barnes and Nobles, they never have like Twilight the Twilight ones there. They. I need to check the website because they recently um, took, like, all the Twilight ones off the website, and I was so confused. I was like, why did they take them off? Because I, I, w- I had searched them, like, the week prior, and then when I went back because yeah. I was going to get one, they were gone. And so now there are, you, can get, you can find them on eBay or Amazon, but people are selling them for more than what they usually are. So, are those guys, how much are they usually um, it kind of depends on where you go. On the website, they can range from, like, 10 to 30, depending on, like, if you get ones that come with, like, um, yeah. or, like, the big ones. Um, but at, like, Books a Million, they run for, like, 12 to 15. Um, Carlos paid a lot for that one. Yeah. I would imagine because if that's he, an exclusive. He got it, yeah, and he got it on Amazon. Yeah. Um, because he was, like, that he looked at Barnes & Noble, could not find them. And I was yeah. like, okay. Well, and I want all of them because I think they on the back they have their like all the ones that you can get. Yeah, I have. Um, so they don't have Jane. many. They have like they have. Uh, they have like normal Bella, normal Edward. They have wedding Edward, wedding Bella. They have Jane. I have. They have two Jane. Janes. They have Jane with the hood up, and then Jane mm-hmm. with the hood down. And Mayor got me the one with I believe her hood is up. So. Do you take yours out of the box or you keep them in the box? Um, it usually depends. If I buy them myself, then I kind of keep them out of the box. Except the Jane one. I took the Jane... Mara gave me the Jane one, but I kept that one out of the box because I wanted to, like, put it in front of my books and I didn't Mm -hmm. want the box covering it. But usually whenever I get, like, special ones or, like, if my friends gift me them, I keep them in the box. Yeah, I'm, like, considering... I'm, like, oh, especially because it's, like, exclusive. I don't want to, like... 
take it out. Yeah. And then, but then I'm like, dude, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have any space on my bookshelf. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, I just recently rearranged my bookshelf to have like to make an entire twilight shelf and i think i'm after i get christmas present and the rest of my valentine's day presents and open my secret santa i'm sure i'm gonna have to like rearrange it yeah because i already have two things that i need to re-put i need to put the the funko pop and then i need to put um i oh the director's the twilight director's notebook is uh the, what i need to put on there too but that can just go with the books but and then I need to get a frame for my Robert Pattinson signature. And then I have my personalized Peter and Ashley signatures coming in the mail soon. Um, they, they, there's been, there was a delay because they had to wait for them to send it to them. And they, they're all the way in Paris. So then you have to wait for that. Yeah. And then since the company's in Paris, they have to like send it out over here. So it's just, it's taken a while. but they're You'll get in, it. Th- yeah, they're coming soon. So dang. Well, okay. The next part. Oh, 277. Edward was getting mad because, um, I think it was because, why was he getting mad? What? Oh, I think it was Mike. He was listening to Mike again. And Mike said... Yes, I never really, really had a chance. How did it, how did it even happen? It was like overnight. Guess when Colin wants something, it doesn't take him long to get it. Um, and then, then Edward said the images that followed his ideas of what I'd gotten were offensive. I stopped listening, and Edward was so pissed that he was like gripping the underneath of the desk and was like, cr- like cracking it. Yeah, I, I remember that. And that, that's on 277. And he was like, he he was pissed. He was like 15 minutes before I could punch him in the face. <laughs> that's intense. Like he would literally kill him. And then he says 14 and a half minutes. Dude. Oh my god. And then this whole time, Emmett thought that it was because something that he had said. He was like, come on, Ed, you know it wasn't serious. Anyway, it's not even about the girl. You know better than I do whatever's going on with Rose. Something between you two, I guess. She's so mad and she wouldn't. So Emmett thinks that Edward's mad because of what he said about Rosalie or something. But Edward's just really mad because of Mike. And I put, I had made a note. I put, Ed, angry Edward is sexy. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> he is. Oh, my God. And then it just, um. They just, yeah, they just talk. And then here on 284. And, um, 285, because he's taking Bella home. And, uh, he was like, oh, I hear, like, I hear your dad coming around the corner, like, it's time to go. But then it ended up not being Bella's dad. It ended up being Billy and Jacob. And I was like, just the contrast between what Billy and Jacob were thinking and what Edward was reading their mind. So, like, um... (laughs) This is where we get the connection, because on 285, he says, another complication, I admit it. So there's the infamous title, yeah. chapter title. But, well, we also um, have, the we also have um a couple, like, where is it? We have it on two, 283, we have the actual title title, you know, for Twilight at the, at the bottom, because it's yeah. like, he's like, it's Twilight, it's the safest place, time of day for us. Love that. That is true, yes. And then, I think it's just so funny that Billy's like, um, oh my god, vampires. And then Jacob's like, is that a blah, 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 blah car? <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Like, that is good. Like, their minds are so, like, different. And then <laughs> Billy's just like, a vampire. And then, uh... Jacob's like, Jacob Bella! Goes, it's Bella! <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. So, then... Then he was worried that that um Char- that Bill- Billy would tell Charlie something, but he ended up not. <sighs> he ended up not telling him anything. Um, and then at the very end, um, we get a very cute Esme and Edward moment where Esme was like, um, he was just she asked him like how he was doing, and he was telling. 
she was kind of like just trying to make him feel better for his decision with like being with Bella. Yes. And we love her for it. Ah, oh, Esme, love. Yeah. And she tells him, I'm sure you won't hurt her. He's like, so you've placed your money with Alice and Emmett, I see. Okay. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then her. chapter 14 okay. basically starts off with Bella asking him it, what he, Bella's in, interested what he does at night. And he is avoiding the question because he doesn't want to admit that he watches her sleep. And then um, he's all like, no, it's still my day. So it's like he's still asking the questions. And um, it's like um, you get a little bit more in Jessica's, also, which is. We, we know more about she kind of um, talked about her mom a little bit. And this is where we kind of get. Um, well, I guess we've always kind of known because there was like hints in previous chapters, like of how Bella's mom was. But yeah. here we kind of just see the more how, like, how... Because she kind of goes on, like, a rant about it. She kind of, like, just goes off. And she's just, like, kind of talking about... Yeah. Um, about her mom. And I, I figure that probably no one has ever asked her, like, about her mom like that. You know? Because, I yeah. mean, Charlie wouldn't ask about her mom because Charlie's heartbroken. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so she's probably, this is, she's just been, like, waiting for, for for someone to just ask her, like, how she is doing with her mom. Because I yeah. can imagine that that's a lot of um, pressure for her, for any yeah. child to have to, like, be the mother to their mom. Yeah, because it's like, you know, when you're a kid, you just want to go you just want to go play with your friends you want to experience things you don't expect to know how to balance a checkbook and completely take on adult responsibilities when you're especially like as an well like and she's an only child yeah. so it's like she didn't have siblings and it, it's it's just like that that's and what kind of annoys even, she she even mentioned that she paid the bills she would like she would do all the errands and stuff like that. And I think that's what made me just really annoyed with Renee is like Bella is because of the fact that Bella's an only child. So it's like before she met, before Renee met Phil, her mom was all she had. And it's like, why, why, are, why are you not spending time with your daughter? Like, why aren't yeah. you taking her to go do these things or just maybe taking a break and chilling at the house and maybe ask her what she wants to do? But no, it's like you want to go out all the time and be free willed and it's like then maybe Bella should have stayed with Charlie yeah, if um, that if that was gonna be the case. Yeah, because I think that I mean Charlie, I, I I still think like Bella would be independent, but like she wouldn't have to because Charlie has been like being independent on his own, so he yeah. can do he does all these things on his own. Yeah. So, she would, like, I mean, she would have to do her laundry. Like, if she was with Charlie for, like, the majority of life, she would have had to do her laundry. She would have had to, you know, She'd do, like, normal, cook. typical chores. Yeah. But she but, probably wouldn't be paying the bills, knowing how to do tax returns. Like. Because yeah. <laughs> that's, like, wild. Then they go to a, um, a, it's a, it's a cafeteria scene, or a uh, part, and... We find out that, oh, that this is, uh, on 294, we find out that Alice is going to meet Bella. Um, she yes. had a vision and she was like, you can't stop me. Like, you're not going to stop me. But then they, they, then they start talking about, um, Bella's dating life, previous dating life, which was non-existent, <laughs> um, okay. like at all. Cause Bella has never caught any, um, caught the interest of anyone or vice versa. She never got asked out on a date. Um, so I wonder if that made Edward, I, I could see how that could make Edward like kind of feel special. Like, Oh wow. And she caught like me, but then also feel like terrible. Cause like, wow. Like she's like <laughs> the one person that she catches the interest of is a monster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is what Edward would say. Cause he's a mopey boy. He is. And on 297, he's asking her about, like, school. He's asking her about careers after school. And she says, um, she gets said something like, oh, like, I want to go to 
college, but um, probably, or that she wants to teach college, but probably community college. Um, or she also says, like, I once thought of working for a publisher, but um, getting a teacher job is easier. And he had said her dreams all had clipped wings, not like those of usual teenagers off to conquer the world. Obviously a product of facing realities long before she could, she should have had to. Which I'm like, I feel that. Like, I, yeah. I, I, I feel that. And that's so sad. But that is also, like, the product of what her mother, kind of, her life with her mother. That's yeah. sad. Yeah. Dang. All her dreams had clipped wings. But that's such, like, a, like a powerful thing to say. Because, like, I get it, you know? Like, it's like a bird, like... Like parrots and so people clip their uh people who own parrots, they clip their wings so that they can't fly. And it's just like Bella's a parrot that needs to fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Alice has a vision on two ninety nine about Oh, so she she starts having a vision about the meadow, because when Edward like Entered, like told her like we're gonna go somewhere she starts having visions of the meadow and Edward's like we have to talk and then on 299 she tells him I love her Edward I won't let you ignore this we're leaving we're gonna go work this through I'll get you to the end of the period and make your excuses yeah. and she was like cause she saw that when they mentioned the meadow that she saw the vision from the beginning so we finally figure out what that vision was it was like them in the meadow Bella was lifeless and dead yeah. Or a vampire. Um, so they they end up talking and then this is where... Oh, on 301, Edward... Um, I guess all the Cullens are like listening in on their conversation. And it's so funny to me that they were all just listening and then like Rosalie's making commentary. And, she, like, yeah. <laughs> and Edward's like re- responding to her too. But like under his breath, like but like Bella can't even hear it. Yeah, and then I guess Bella and Rosalie make eye contact, and Bella's staring a little too long, and yeah, <laughs> she was like terrified. <laughs> oh yeah, so she says, "Gall go at me, will you, you bat faced little nu- nu- nuisance? nuisance?" Um, and then Bella went white. <laughs> She's just frozen. She's probably terrified. Yeah. And then she, Rosalie tells him she started it. <laughs> <laughs> Rosalie, this is not what we're going to do. We're not going to play these games. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's when Bella kind of figures out, like, oh, she doesn't like me, right? Yeah. And he tells her it's just because she's worried about what would happen if it ends badly. I mean, Bella doesn't know about the Voltori, but Rosalie sure does. And it's like, what if a rogue, and Rosalie's also like, what if a rogue vampire comes into town, hint, hint, what what happens later? And it's like, yeah. Then, this is, on 303 is when Alice and Bella finally meet. Um, And can we just talk about the interjection for a moment? (laughs) Like, freaking a, Edward's like, Alice, Bella, Bella, Alice. Yeah, and then it calls it a day. Simple. And she says, hello, Bella. It's finally nice to meet you. And she says, hi, ba- hi, Alice. And then um, I guess but Alice didn't want to push it. She was just like, okay, fine, like whatever. Because knowing Alice, she would like hug her, like something crazy. And Edward would be like, are you kidding me? Um, and then they go off and they get Bella's truck to bring it back to the school. And he left her a little note. Yeah. Do we know what that note is? I'm like, I can't get up to get the book. It, which which note was it? Should I search it up? I'm gonna search it up. Was it? I don't think it was. It be safe. Mm, I think so. I uh, maybe. He said, "I wrote a brief note, then darted out to leave it on the driver's seat of Bella's truck." Um, I know there was no real power to the action, but hopefully, it would remind her of her promise. Let me see. Hmm. I think okay. it was be safe. 
coup... Euh... I'm like, what, which chapter would it be in Twilight? Yeah, I think maybe it was be safe. Because I can't think of, it's not the, it's not the, that one quote, like, something about having his heart, the one that Mare has tattooed on her side. It's not that one, is it? The one that Mare has tattooed on her side, the... No, that one, I think, was an eclipse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so maybe, I think it is Be Safe. Yeah. Probably. He should have just... I think, you know how in, well, in Eclipse, they have that portion where it says the quote in his, like, handwriting? They should have done that. At the, like, Stephanie should have done that at the bottom, so we know what the note said. <laughs> Even though we could probably look in, um, what's it called right now, in Twilight, but I can't even get up to get it. <sighs> okay, now we get to chapter 15, ah! which I wrote a lot of notes for chapter 15. Ooh, wait. I'm going to, after chapter 15, I'm going to have to readjust because I am like, I went working. I went to go work out yesterday, and I'm sore. Okay, chapter fifteen, probability. So this chapter starts out with Edward and Alice. They are looking at all the possible things that could go, that could happen, um, the day of the meadow, and they're going through all of the um, all of the possible options. You know, there's somewhere. Edward kills Bella, they're somewhere, he turns her, they're, you know, there's just so many possibilities, um, and they're just, like, it's kind of like, like, he's seeing her visions, right? Um, yeah. And she tells him, like, it's the same meadow that you plan to take Bella tomorrow, like, everything looks the same. And the part where we get the probability title is because, um, on 309 she starts saying like it's 60 40 ish maybe even 65 35 like she's giving him the problem like the probability of how what she would kill him and then um so then he was like she's dead either way i'll stop her heart um he also mentions prom pomegranate seeds so a little nod to the cover um he says one too many pomegranate seeds and she was bound to the underworld with me no way back springtime sunlight family future soul all stolen for from her so that's a little like Hades Persephone um little I love that shout out there um then so then I guess during this time Edward's like making the decision in his mind like I'm not gonna do this I'm not gonna do like I'm not gonna blah 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 like kill her turn her into a vampire so then um Alice ends up seeing a third vision and that's on page 310. And it's the vision of, um, it says here, another picture in her head, not as sharp as others, a trio in the cramped front of room of Bella's house on a sofa, Bella beside me, my arm casually slung around her shoulders. Alice was on the floor beside Bella. And then um, it says that her skin was still soft and translucent, the pink on her cheeks healthy. She was still warm and brown and human. Uh, but she was different, and so she wasn't a girl, but she was a woman. So she was a little more aged, but not a lot, like a couple years, three or four. And so this was the one, this was the, the future that he wanted to see. He was like, okay, then, like, then there's a possibility. And um, that kind of made him make the decision, like, oh, and then Alice tells him, like, okay, so this is all your decision, but what about hers? Like, what if... She does not want, like, want, she says, um, did, did it ever occur to you that Bella might not be willing to lose you? And he was like, no one would ever want to choose this. So, like, I don't even have to argue about that. Um, then, where is it? Three, I think on 313, 
Oh, 313 is where... So then they finally say, okay, well, right now it's like 70, 30, maybe even 75, 25. Um, she was like, so it's looking better. Um, but she tells him that... Where is it? They So she, he, he has to hunt because he was going to be with Bella all day the next day alone. So he's like, I'm going to yeah. hunt. And she spots a lion. And he mentions the lion population in the park... And I was like, oh my gosh, did Kristen foreshadow the, like, Kristen is some sort of mind reader because she made a TikTok that was like, I searched up, like, the lion population in Forks and it was, like, super low. And she was like, um, why are the Cullens eating endangered <laughs> animals? So, but yeah. the fact that, that it was mentioned, I was like, okay, well, Stephanie's, like, realizing some things then, like. She knows. She was like, okay, well, maybe lion wasn't the best thing for them to eat. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, okay, so fine. But I was like, oh, Kristen is like a, it's like a, she's like a fortune teller. She can see the future. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, and then they just go, um, they go hunting. Um, and then this is when they see Bella going and to the house, right? Cause it yeah, says, yeah. He sees Esme and Carlisle waiting for them, and then he sees Jasper nodding to Bella with his eyes uh, like gold. So he sees that within the next couple of days or week, then Bella's going to meet the family. Yeah. And then, um, so on, where is it? On 319, we get a little flashback to um, how life... 1919. Yeah, to 1919, December 1919, almost a year after... Well, I think it was a year after, or more than a year after Carlisle had um, turned, turned him. Edward. And we yeah. just kind of get like a little glimpse into how they lived. And at, Carlisle was really, really trying to make it like a family he like they celebrated Christmas. They like did all this cute stuff. Um, something that I was like, we meet. Uh, Sho is it? How, what's her name? Shoban. 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 We meet her for the first time on three twenty three, and um, the way that Edward described her body, he said, um, oh yeah, he said it had been another life. It had been in another lifetime that I noticed that I had last noticed a woman this way and I had found I was hard pressed to know where to put my eyes. I ser I centered them on her face, which like her body was intensely female. Her lips were full and curved and her deep crimson eyes enormous and fringed by lashes thicker than the needles on the pine bows. Her glossy um, black hair was piled into a generous roll on top of her head with two thin, with two thin wooden rods carelessly stabbed through to hold it in place. I'm like, that's such a good description. Like, wow. And, um, this, so, Shoban ends up, like, he's reading her mind, and he's like, oh, like, she's like, how unfortunate for him to be, like, getting held back from, like, all the greatest thing of all time. And this is how we learn to how Edward ended up leaving Carlisle and Esme. So he talks yeah. about that a little bit. He talks about how you know, he had had human blood for the first time and it was overwhelmed. Um, but, you know, he liked it and he left them. And he he even said, oh, um, where did he say? Um, the last, last page on 328. Where is it? He said, oh, he says, I had no doubts. I now knew the meaning of the phrase because he says the greatest joy of this life. The greatest joy of my life was this fragile, brave, warm, insightful girl sleeping so peacefully nearby. Bella, the very greatest joy that life had to offer me and the greatest pain when she was lost. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, how beautiful. And then uh, the very last line too, like got me in the heart. He said, um, what, what, what I was doing was basking, drowning, wallowing in my love for Bella. I didn't think it would be difficult to keep doing that. <laughs> Oh, oh, my goodness. And that's the end of 15. Such a good way to end that. Like, wow. Um, yeah. We're going to be doing chapters 16 to 
to 20 on, on episode 11. Um, oh my goodness. Oh, I was like, where's my phone? Here my phone is. Episode 11 will come out on February 1st. Um, and, and this episode obviously is out on the 25th. If you're, if you're watching it today, hello. Um, but yeah, so wow, the, that was, we're gonna, we're getting into a pretty, uh, big scene too. We're getting into, um, the meadow scene. We're gonna get into all that on the next, um, on the next episode. So make sure you guys tune in for that. Um, but any final thoughts on these chapters 11 through, um, 11 through 20 or no, 11 through 15. Um, I think, I think it was definitely some, like some of them are my favorites and also cause you know, I read the draft of Midnight Sun. So all of this was new material that I had waited for. Yeah. And I think it was definitely well worth the wait, and especially I, my favorite was like the flashback back yeah. and getting to know because you know you we it's something that you've always wondered, and it's hinted at in Twilight. It's hinted through the movies. You kind of see a glimpse of it, but it's always the question of why did he really do that? And yeah. then you come to find out, oh, it was something that had happened with. Siobhan and how she kind of was like you're depriving yourself of this and yeah, yeah. I think chapters 11 through 15 are really just them navigating at like the relationship the relationship and how things are going to happen um because I think right now for Edward it was still quite it, for a big portion of even like the first half that we read because we're halfway through the book now um is him as there's a lot of him being indecisive and still like not knowing what's going to happen. Like he's left like a couple times he, or like he's left. Well, he's left one time for sure, but then he came back and then he tried leaving again, but he couldn't. So he's yeah. leaving. And then he's like, like in her room. And then he's, you know, um, geez, he's just, he's just like so unsure. I'm looking at my giant Edward tapestry, judging him so high right now. I'm like, Edward, what are you doing? <laughs> Jeez, Edward. He's quite the character. There was something. Oh, there was something I didn't talk about um, in for chapter 15. And it was um, when they were having all the visions, Edward said that he would be who Bella needed him to be. But um, he had even, he had told Alice when Alice was having all her visions that he was going to leave. Like, he was like, well, then I'll just leave or I'll, I'll kill myself or whatever, right? Because he had said that. And uh, she was like, no, if you leave, he showed her a vision of how Bella would be in, in New Moon. Ah! And I was like, okay, foreshadow, because she kind of mentioned she knows how Bella's going to be when she's all depressed. But then also, like, uh, and he was, she was like, and if you leave, there's only two things. You're either going to come back to check on her or you're going to come back to kill her. Like, she was like, in my visions, I see nothing else. She was like, so what's it going to be? But then I wonder how that ended up changing because obviously we know that in New Moon, he did leave, right? Um, he, he, he was just waiting for something to like... Happen. Push yeah. Him. Yeah. And I think that... Well, because he said that all of Alice's visions are like subjective, like they change with decisions. So I think that definitely if Bella hadn't gotten close to Jacob in new moon, then it, that, that vision that Alice had would have definitely probably become a reality. Either him coming back to check on Bella or him coming back to kill her, or like to turn her or whatever. Right. Because yeah. then if because since she was with Jacob, he didn't really have to worry about her much because she was kind of getting her mind off things with Jacob. So I thought that that yeah. was interesting that 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 changed, and I think that that I mean, well, we knew we know that Alice's visions are subjective to decisions and all that stuff. So yeah, so the, we're halfway we're halfway done. So that is it for chapter mm -hmm. no for for chapter for episode ten no ten yes. Yeah, ten. Uh, episode 10. That's it for episode 10, yeah. guys. Um, We're going to be back on... Well, we're going to keep recording after this for the next episode, but 
Um, make sure you guys go follow us on all of our social medias at the Bite Podcast RR on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter. I'm pretty sure. Twitter is at Podcast Bite. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. We don't really use Twitter much. If you want to like stay updated with all of our things, probably Instagram is the best place. Um, yeah. And if you want little sneak peeks or little fun videos, um, we post some videos on our TikTok occasionally as well. Um, we also have another podcast, guys, <laughs> that we started and we just put out our first episode on the last this past this past Monday. Monday. Yeah, so it's a uh, it's a pretty long name, but <laughs> the Instagram. But so you could uh you could go check out our Instagram. The Instagram is um extremely wicked podcast. It's a mystery podcast where we talk about. True crime, mysteries, conspiracy theories, serial killers, cults, which is what our first yeah. episode was about, was about the People's Temple or Jonestown Massacre, um, whatever. People have so many different names for that one. But uh, yeah. if you want to look at a sneak peek, I think I'll be putting one out soon because I'm still editing it. But we'll put a sneak peek out. There's also, we have a sneak peek of the a sneak peek of the podcast in general on youtube and spotify um i believe our spotify is the it's the, our spotify is the actual like the long title but. so the, <laughs> the title is on spotify the very eerie extremely wicked and quite spooky podcast so go ahead and go check that out we have a trailer there we have our first episode there and on our mm-hmm. next episode for that podcast we'll be talking about the manson family so oh, yes. I got I got to print out my stuff for that. Yeah. So we'll be talking about that on our other podcast. But if you're like, I only like Twilight. I don't want to. I don't want to listen to the other podcast. That's fine. But they can just stick with this stick, one. Yeah, stick with this one. We have lots more things to talk about and a lot of episodes to come. So we'll see you guys on next time. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah. Bye.